celebration of Christ. That's what our worship service is. We're celebrating Christ. If there are any children, Sister Amira is ready. If there are none, stay here, Sister Amira. You don't have to worry. But as children come, if there are none, stay here. Are there? Good. Then you are in good company. Sister Amira is ready for you. Blessed are you. I always announce our website. It's changing on a weekly basis. In fact, we're meeting this coming week to even redo the website. Please turn to it. I'd like to hear some feedback from you. What do you think? What are we doing? Are we putting the right sermons, the right methods? Are we putting the right videos, etc., etc., video clips and news, etc.? And uh, you'll see the website like this. If you want to enter the prayer room, you have to put a, a password, Jesus is Lord. We kept it like this because there are some names of pastors in the Arab world. We don't want to uh, expose anybody to anything. And uh, the prayer meeting is continuing on Friday. Thank God a new person came this Friday to the group that usually meets and we were rejoicing. I invite you to come and experience it for yourself Friday at 6.15. We're studying the letter to the Ephesians. It's becoming practical, folks. I don't know if some of you have attended. I've been convicted every time I attend that Wednesday meeting. It's teaching us about what Christianity should look like. We learned last time, last two weeks, about humility. Boy, I was convicted. I said, I'm far from that. And then we learned about gentleness and the gentleness of Christ. How Christianity should look like is important. So I invite you to come on Wednesdays. Next Sunday, we have a teacher, brother, an academician, a scholar, a brother, Brian O'Haran. He's with the Wycliffe Bible Translators. I invite you to come next week and listen to this scholar of these people who have translated the Bible into almost every language. It's not all languages still. There are languages without a Bible. In fact, there are still languages with no portion of the Bible. So they are working on it, and I invite you to come and listen to Brother Brian O'Hara next Sunday and be excited about how close we are to finishing the big task. Folks, I think when God said, and this gospel shall be preached in every part of the world, then the end will come. I think, you know, Brian O'Hara is going to tell us how close we are from this. I mean, this is one point still needs to be finished. There are some languages that don't have the Bible or any portion of the Bible. And I think God is fair and just that he says, I want everyone to get a fair chance at my son's salvation. And uh, Resurrection Sunday, the 24th, the Sunday after it, we're going to be together, all three churches, we're going to be in the big sanctuary. All of you, of course, are expected to arrive what time? 10.30. 10, oh boy, they're going to be watching us. So, <laughs> folks, let's show them that we arrived even 10.20. Shall we? Yes. You want to go for 10.50? Okay, 10.20 is okay. Let's arrive on time, folks. Let's tell them grace and truth gospel church comes on time. Boy, some people want to show up at 10 o'clock. So be it. There's some people who will be praying for you at 10 o'clock that you show up at 10, 15, 10, 20 next week. I mean, two weeks from now. So next week, Brian O'Hara. The week after is the time with uh, uh, the three, two churches. And I mean, celebrating the resurrection. What a great day uh, it is. Saturday, April 16, this coming Saturday, the final preparation day for the day of prayer folks we need volunteers thank god for everyone who came out there's a young lady 13 years old her name is rebecca she came with her father to that one of those preparation day she said i want to volunteer i said praise god god is moving young kids and she said i want to work with the children please put my name down and we did so i say may rebecca's example move others to say i want to do something there is a job for everybody, be it at the door, be it in distribution, be it in, 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 in distributing things inside, outside, etc. with the children. You can donate half an hour, one hour. Say, I want to volunteer half an hour of my time during that day on Saturday, April 16. And also, so really I'd like you to begin even now praying for this day. We're praying for it and inviting people for it at Biola. But that's not going to be it because two days of revival will follow and 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 
and will proceed and follow one on Friday May 6th at 7 p.m. that particular week we will cancel the Wednesday meeting but we will keep a Friday meeting at 6 p.m. and then Sunday of course as usual we'll be here and I put 11 because there's always preparation with the visiting singers and uh, other people etc especially brother Ayman and uh, and others and when I say others I think we're going to put names of ex-Muslims are going to be speaking. We have a fellow by the name of Abdul Murray from Detroit, Michigan, an excellent, elegant, eloquent attorney from a Shiite background who became Christian. Guess what? He wants all the Shiite Muslims to become Christians today. And he's putting all his energy. He says, I want them all to come to know what I have found out. And he has a big practice, but he became Christian. So thank God. And there'll be others besides him who will be speaking on that day in Nahda Ruhiya. Al-Jum'ah Ahad Wal-Jum'ah Lal-Tasbaq wa Tali Today, I'd like to take you to Joshua J-O-S is for Joshua Chapter 2 and uh, verses I'm sorry, chapter 6 and verses 2 and 3 If you can read this with me This will be our message for the day The text that the Lord wants us to look at it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto your hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Verse 3. I think I have it here. Oops. Okay, go ahead. And you shall compass the city all you men of war and go round about the city once thus shall you do it six days let's bow before the lord and ask special favor mercy as we are to see what he wants us to do how how do we progress from here? How do we occupy the world, the difficult part of the world? How do we enter Jericho? Father, we realize that the task before us is beyond us. Difficulties are, they look like they are unsurmountable. There are walls that have been erected before us. Our progress seems to be not easy. But you already knew that. And yet you say, I have given it to you. Go ahead and do it my way. So today we pray that indeed we will do it and learn to do it and commit to do it your way and expect victory in the end. In our personal warfare, in our collective warfare, in the church warfare, in the business warfare, in the family warfare, give us victory as we do things your way and teach us to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This world looks like Jericho. Today's world has placed thick and dense walls around it making it difficult for us, the church of God, to progress. It's amazing how much resemblance there is between our efforts that we're expected to do and the efforts that the people of God did as they were planning on entering Jericho. Jericho was shut I like that word. It says in uh, Joshua chapter 6 verse 1, it was so tightly shut up that completely shut up that no one could come out and no one could go in. It was hermetically sealed. Nobody can penetrate in and nobody can leave out. And yet, God said to the, his people, I want you to take that city. And I want to tell you, when we look around us into this world, 
we see the task as difficult as the people of God once saw it as they were compassing around Jericho. God says, go. Preach the gospel. Make disciples. But Lord, they're not easy. Come on. Let's admit it. It's not easy, is it? See, this world has erected dense walls with its large religions. Islam. Catholicism. The big walls. Nobody can come out. And nobody can go in. Lord, they don't let us go into their circles. Nor are they willing to come out from their circles. Yet the Lord says, I'm going to teach you how to do it. And when you do it my way, Jericho will become yours. Guaranteed. So the Lord says, don't worry, I know. But don't let that discourage you because I've already decreed that Jericho will be occupied. And I think we need to believe that. And we need to realize that God has given us the land. Jericho was a frontier city. It was the first city in the land of Canaan. Yet it was the strongest city. But I want to tell you, God on purpose put the strongest and the toughest city as number one. Because if Jericho falls, the rest will come very easily. And I want to tell you, Islam and Catholicism are standing before us as a mighty fortress that we cannot penetrate. But God says once you penetrate those, the rest is going to be easy. The rest will fall out like a domino effect. You will not have trouble, but you have to start with Jericho. It has to start with traditional, strong, big, mighty religions. Let traditional religion fall and everyone will be at the feet of Jesus. Let Islam and Catholicism and all traditional empty religion fall and everyone else will come at the feet of Jesus. So I'm coming here today on a Sunday, two weeks before Resurrection Day celebration. To cry out to you folks, brothers and sisters, and tell you, take courage. Because God has already decreed to give us the victory. You're bearing your testimony, go on and do it. Are you praying? Do it even more. Are you worshipping regularly? Do it even more. Are you living a holy living? Do it even more. Go ahead and carry the ark. Go ahead and blow your trumpet, the trumpet of God. Go ahead and carry your testimony and compass the city because soon the walls of Jericho will fall down and victory is on its way. The text that we read tells us how we should do it. It tells us about three practical lessons that we can apply as we do this very difficult task. To occupy the world for Jesus Christ. And it is in three words. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to wait. And we're supposed to win. Could you repeat those three words behind me? We're supposed to do what first? Work. work. Second one is what? Wait. wait. And the third one is? Wait. Win. That's it. That's all the sermon folks. So it's not going to be long. First of all, we're supposed to do what? To work. To work. And look with me at uh, verse 2. It says, And Jehovah said to Joshua, See, I have given you Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of war. Verse 3. Now this is the work, the promise. But it only happens when you do what? When you work. And you shall go around the city, all the men of war, go around the city once. So you shall do for six days. And that's not the end of it. Verse 4. And on the seventh day, seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. And the seventh day you shall go around the city, not only once, but seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets and when you do that 
expect that the walls are going to come down suddenly. And you're going to have Jericho in your hands, guaranteed, signed, the Lord God. Can we believe that promise? Is this something for us? Are we supposed to rest? We who have crossed the Jordan, we who have entered the holy promised land, are we supposed to kick back and relax on the banks of the Jordan and say, Lord, go ahead and do it yourself? Or is he saying, I want you to go ahead and do it? You see, Jericho will not be occupied unless the people of God go around it every day of the week for six days once and on the seventh day even seven more times and then blow the trumpet and then the work will be done our gospel is a gospel of grace we're not here telling people that you can save by faith by 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 works except by faith we're not here telling you that you can be saved by anything else but by that than by faith but after you're saved by faith it is then that the ground is yours to work. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. By grace are you saved through faith. And that is what? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. But look at verse 10. Right there, you get saved. Now, guess what? You got to start working. It says, for we are his work and machine created in Christ Jesus for good what works. works that god has before ordained that we should walk in them our gospel is the gospel of grace to prepare us to do work woe to us it's a horrible day in the church when people just kick back and say i'm saved now i gotta relax it's a horrible day when the church loses its focus that it was meant to work. Imagine the people of God crossing the Jordan and saying, God is going to occupy this land anyway. All I have to do is... No, it will not happen unless you put your share of work. We want to occupy this world for Jesus and God said, I want you to work. We say, why isn't God saving people? I want to tell you why he's not saving people, because you're not doing your job. I'm not doing my job. Somebody isn't doing his job. Somebody isn't working. The reason more people aren't being saved is because someone is not doing his share. Now, I want to make sure it's not me. And I hope every one of us say, I want to make sure it's not me, because I want to be doing my part. I want to do it the way God has designed me after he has save me and this work i want to give it few descriptions the good work that saves that god will accomplish his purposes through us in this world first of all this work is supposed to be done collectively look with me at uh, verse 3 again of uh, joshua chapter 6 verse 3 it says and you shall compass go around the city some of the men of war few of the men of, did he say that all excuse me what was that all. all in other words everyone should be involved in this work that's right that's what he says he says i want all everyone involved to be there this work should be done collectively together how encouraging it is when everybody is doing their share. I want to tell you, there's nothing more encouraging than to see your brother, your sister on your right hand side, left hand side, doing their share, pulling their part of the plow and lifting some of the burden off your back. And it becomes lighter, becomes easier and becomes being done. Let me tell you, let me tell you, there's nothing better than seeing everyone doing it and taking their part in their responsibility soldiers and priests those who fight and those who carry the ark it doesn't matter those who teach and those who support those who teach those who pray and those who give it doesn't matter as long as you're doing your share 
you are in the right perspective. After all, we are all priests, aren't we? In the new covenant era, every person who come, came to know the Lord Jesus is called what? A priest, Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, it says to him who has saved us and washed us and made us clean by his blood and made us to become what? Kings and priests for, next, next verse, and made us to become, verse 6, kings and priests to God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We are the royal priesthood of Christ. Every single saved person is a priest. Priest to offer offerings by doing good works this is our offerings of worship and good works if you want to see what they are look at hebrews chapter 13 doing the good works doing what is needed doing your share and carrying your part of the burden you are made a priest into god's army to carry the job <coughs> woe to us when we kick back and say i think i'll let it to some other people you see this was not meant the church of God was not meant to relax in it. It was meant to prepare you to do your part of the work. And if you do it, things will happen. Expect, I say expect this world to come to Christ. You see, people say, but you know, after all, we're a small amount. I want to give you just some numbers. I said it once before and I used my brother Rick to help me in calculating this. Let's take LA, Orange County. Let's be local here. There are about 10 million people living in LA County, probably 4 million living in Orange County. That's, I think that's statistics. I think it's still good statistics right now. And let's guess, let's guess that the number of believers in LA, Orange County is something in the neighborhood of about, that's also another guess, 300,000. And let's take another guess. That of those 300,000, every one of the 300,000 will make a plan to pray, concentrate, and win one person per year for Christ. Does that look like a very difficult task? One per year. Now, I'm going to say one, one per month or one per week. One per year. Just you concentrate on praying for a friend, on, on following up to a friend, on visiting a friend, on keep going after a friend. And you say, Lord, give me that friend, give me that member of the family one a year do you know what will happen at the end of seven years you do the math three hundred thousand next year it'll be what six hundred thousand the year after is what million two hundred thousand you know what will happen at the end of seven years folks this is math the entire la and orange county will become christians i mean that's unbelievable Take our church. Let's say we have 40 people here who commit and say, I'm going to win one person per year for Christ. You know what will happen at the end of seven years will be close to 3,000 people. That's how it compounds. That's how it adds up. If everybody says, I'm going to do my share. No, it's not only one person who wins people to Christ. Or two people. I'm going to be part of those who go around the city and win people to Christ. And if everybody takes his share, let me tell you, expect not only small miracles, but huge miracles to happen. This world is not doing good because somebody, some Christians, me and others, are not doing their share of the job. That's why. And if we do it God's way, collectively, together, then expect Jericho's walls to fall down. And this work needs to be done not only collectively, but it needs to be done obediently. Obediently. You see, there was no race there saying, you know what, I can run faster. Uh, I was doing a little jog with my daughter yesterday. She jogs. I don't. So guess what happened when she began jogging? I had to take a stop. And I called her. I said, stop. She said, Daddy, come on. We, I just begun. I couldn't breathe. So I had to slow down. She turned back and came back to me, etc. But you see, in doing God's work, this is not about jogging ahead of somebody else. This is about doing it together, encouraging one another. This is not a race competition against one another. This is a race for God. I want to do it 
God's way in an obedient manner, doing my share, supporting my brother, and going our way together in an obedient and doing it God's way, His way. God has equipped you to do something, do it. Don't try to compare yourself to someone else. Maybe God has equipped you to evangelize. That's great. He has equipped someone else to pray. Wonderful. He has equipped someone else to give. He has equipped someone else to teach. He has equipped someone else to encourage. Let us together and each one in his own gift that was given by God do our share. I'm not competing as my brothers and sisters. I'm doing it to please God and doing it God's way. And when we do it, not only collectively, but we do it obediently, expect the walls of Jericho to come down. This world has barricaded itself away from us, but this world has been given to us. And Jericho will one day be given into our hands. Soldiers in their troops, priests in their array, those who hold the sword, and those who carry the ark. Just do what God has equipped you to do. Do it God's way. Do it obediently. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, As you have been gifted. What is your gift? Then do it. As you have been gifted, receive the gift, ministering it to yourselves as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We are stewards. You've been entrusted with this gift. God is going to hold me accountable. For the gifts he's given me. He's going to hold you accountable for the gifts he's given you. What are you doing with them? Are they resting or are you putting them to use for his kingdom and for the encouragement of his church? Let me tell you, it is only then that the vision becomes clear. Remember that verse of scripture says, my people have perished for lack of vision. The vision becomes clear when we're doing the work collectively and obediently. When we're doing it God's way, when we're doing it together. If I take a tour and the tour says, we're going to show you such and such sites. But you know what? You'll never see those sites unless you stay in the bus and follow the tour guide. If you want to have a vision of the whole city, you have to climb to the top of the mountain. The vision becomes clear when we do it obediently when we do it God's way it is then that the vision becomes clear and we begin really realizing that God has given us Jericho he has given us this world we need to work collectively we need to work obediently and we need to work daily daily you know it says in uh, it says it says it, in verse verse 3 and verse 4 gives us gives us that you shall do it for six days and then on the seventh day you do it seven times how many days of the week are there there is something to be done how many days every day every day there's no days of rest this is not about you know what i work for god two days i think i should take a little relaxation for three no, there's no such thing i love what brother ed has on his car in for what for wars we're soldiers at war folks you don't tell a soldier, you know what, relax, kick back, you know, we're sending you to a battle, but, you know, fight two days of the week, five days of the week. That'll be a, a dead soldier because the rest of the two days he won't have his weapon at his hand. We need to realize that we are in it in an unceasing manner. This is a warfare that will have to continue six days once a day and on the seventh day it is seven times. There is no time for resting from doing God's work. We have to do it collectively. We have to do it obediently. We have to do it daily. I want to tell you we have to remember that as soldiers we have to sleep with our weapon right next to us our hand should be on our sword all the time we are ready to battle the evil the temptations and all the seductions of this world realize this is about warfare folks we are at war if you realize that you're a soldier for christ you would not want to take a day off oh i'm going to go and compromise a little bit and live with the rest of the world for a couple days of the week don't do it don't do it. You are expected, if you are to be successful, to do it daily. To do the work of God daily. 
If you're praying, pray daily. If you're witnessing, witness daily. If you're preaching, preach daily. If you are attending whatever service, do it daily. If you're encouraging, do it daily. And I want to tell you, when we do this, expect results. Things will happen. The wheel must keep turning. You know, in an industry, you know, all industries are built on the, on the concept of, of the wheel. There has to be something that keeps spinning. And the more it spins, the more wealth. You know, those robots, line production, etc. There's, there's a continuous motion that has to keep going. They figure it out, the engineers figure it out, and if the wheel stops, they stop also the production. And we have to be ceaselessly, continuously producing, doing things for Christ on a daily, on a daily basis. The devil is fighting us and so shall we fight him and expect his fight daily. Temptations are coming and we should expect them to come daily. Victories are ours and we should do them on a daily basis. And Jericho will be once soon ours. We are to work collectively, obediently, daily, and we are to work confidently. I'm sure that as those people were rounding around Jericho, some people started ridiculing them from up, up there on the on the big, uh, uh, you know, walls. Hey, look at those weak Jewish people. They don't know what to do except going around. And they were applauding with a lot of ridicule. Look what they are trying to do. Come to our city. Hey, why don't you come a little bit here and we can shoot an arrow at you. But they stayed a little far. But they did it in a confident manner that eventually this city is going to be ours. I guarantee you there could have been one or two or three that said, you know, are we doing the right thing? And sometimes this happened to us in the church. Are we doing the right thing? I mean, after all, we haven't taken the world, have we? There aren't too many people that are coming to Christ. I mean, are we doing the right thing? Let me tell you, as long as you're compassing the city and carrying the ark, carrying your testimony, and doing it in the name of God, expect that God's promises will come to pass. Guaranteed. Don't let that doubt come to you. Do it with faith. You know, there's a nice verse of scripture in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Biduni iman la yumkin erdao. You cannot please God, unless you have faith in his promises. And I want to tell you, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, it says, guess how, how Jericho was won. It says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. You know, it was faith. These people believe that God has given us the city. They can say all they want. Doubts can creep on us. The enemy can come and whisper in our ears many doubtful words, but I'm going to keep it up. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to keep witnessing. And I'm going to keep praying. And I'm going to keep worshiping. I'm going to keep straightening my lifestyle because I know God is giving us the victory. It may not be here yet, but by faith, I see it coming down. By faith, the walls of Jericho have come down. And I want to tell you, we do it by faith. Remember when the Lord Jesus fed the, the, the 5,000? He asked them to give them what they have, and they said, we don't have much. But by faith, by faith, they said, he probably can do it. And they gave him all they had. We give the Lord what we have. The rest is up to him. But he demands from us faith in the little that he has entrusted us with. So far, we have to work how? Collectively, obediently, daily, confidently, and last but not least, we have to work courageously. We have to work in a manner that says we are not afraid of the difficulties. Those people who were going around Jericho's walls, let me tell you, these were huge stones. And the gates were so thick and so dense that they said, you know what? This is difficult. And I want to tell you, real faith does not overlook difficulties. But real faith looks and says, this is difficult. Logically, it doesn't make sense, but I believe the promise of God. If God said he's given me Jericho, then he knows what he's doing. And if he told me that we're going to occupy this world, then he knows what he's doing. I'm going to do it his way, although logic looks like it's not going to happen. I'm going to compass the city 
seven days a week and on the seventh day I'm going to go around it seven times in other words as the time comes closer let us put more energy into that more zeal more courage and continue and expect Jericho to be ours folks do you believe that do you believe that if you believe that raise your hand come on this is our creed shall we make it our practice Shall we make it our practice, folks? You know, this sermon was only said here. Shall we put it to work after we exit from here? Or before we exit as we meet one another? Let us make it our practice. If this is our creed, that's good. But let's make it our practice and expect great miracles to happen in our midst and around us in this city. I want to tell you, God expects his people, if they want to be successful, to do what first? To work. To work collectively, obediently, daily, confidently, and courageously. And second thing that we learn from our text today, from Joshua chapter 6 and verse 2 and 3, is that God expects his people to also what? Wait. Wait. Look, it said, we don't have to reread it, 6.3, it says, it says, and he told him to go ahead and do it, go around it for six days it may look like a long time why lord are you wanting six why don't you shorten it to two days i mean after all lord and sometimes we try to give the lord some advice don't we lord listen lord i want to win more people to you so therefore if you give me jericho in two days guess what i'll occupy more cities why are you taking so long lord we try to negotiate and try to go by reasoning lord it makes more sense in fact if we occupy jericho fast it'll be a good example for those other cities they come faster to to you lord give us those people faster lord move things faster why do you want all this time why do you want us to wait it's not easy for people at war to wait but you know what that's exactly what they do to them when they train them for war they make them wait in training camps, and those who have been to training camps would know, military camps, they ask them to do mean, difficult jobs that look useless. Here's a big field for you. I want you to carry this big load from here and put it there and then bring it from there to here and from here back to there, back and forth. It looks useless. But you know what? That's exactly what they want them to do to be obedient and to wait be ready and wait build those muscles build that obedience build that no knowledge build yourself prepare yourself be ready and wait sometimes we say lord i've waited to wait wait upon the lord i tell you wait i love that verse isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says and those who wait on the Lord shall not shall renew their strength they shall mount up wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint if you wait it is meant to build you first God will not give you the victory unless he has given you victory over yourself first we want to occupy the world but we haven't occupied ourselves yet we have not built our character. God is building character in you. He's building character in me. The character of Christ, the obedience of Christ, the gentleness of Christ, the humility of Christ, the righteousness of Christ. He has to build it in you before he gives you the victories that he's preparing you for. He wants you to work, but he wants you also to wait. And waiting will change you. And I want to tell you the other reasons why God is waiting. Why is God waiting? Why does he occupy this world suddenly and let's get it over? I want to tell you, I'm glad he waited a little bit for someone like me to come to Christ. He's waiting for other people to come to Christ slowly. There's still souls there that he doesn't want them to perish. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that God is not slack in his promises, but he doesn't want that anyone should perish, but that should all would come to the knowledge of truth and repentance. God is not slack. This waiting may look like a wait in your eyes and my eyes but God is doing it for the right purpose for all things work together for good to those who love God he's building you and he's preparing this world for a beautiful beautiful conclusion a poem 
a masterpiece is being written by God about how he dealt with this world. A poem that will be sung forever in heaven. A poem is not finished. And I want to tell you, sometimes when you're writing a poem, you just want to make sure you end it the right way. And God is making sure that this poem, this eternal poem, will be sung forever and ever. How truth has become victorious and how the lies of the enemy were put, were put to shame. And while we're waiting, comfort yourselves. Pat yourself on the back while you're waiting. When you become a little impatient, remember, you may not have Jericho, but guess what we have? We have Rahab. We're winning some of those folks. We may not have all the Muslims, but we have some Muslims who can come to the Lord. We may not have all the Catholics, but we have some Catholics who have come to the Lord. Comfort yourself that God is giving us some fruit. And soon he will give us the entire, the entire city. Be ready and wait. God expects his people to work. God expects his people to wait and last. And I'll finish this very quickly. God expects his people to win. To win. Let me tell you, victory is coming. Victory is ours soon and at the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's soon coming to snatch his church from this world. Victory has been prepared, and when we will land with Christ to reign and rule with him, let me tell you, there shall be no knee that will not bow, and no tongue that will not confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. Victory is ours. And I want to tell you, even now, let's prepare that song of hallelujah. Glory is to the Lamb of God. All glory and all honor, because it's him who was slain and has purchased us to God his Father from every tongue nation and tribe work wait and prepare to be winning soon to be singing the shout of victory comfort yourselves that the city is not ours but we already are seeing the signs that it will soon be ours the sermon has been said but it's not finished until i say one quick word to someone who says i don't have anything to do with this I don't know what he's talking about. Why should I work hard? Why should I wait? Why should I expect to win? I want to tell you the reason you are thinking this way is because you're not part of God's army yet. You have not entered the battle yet. You have not been saved. And to you I say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him. Because I want to tell you, those who stayed in Jericho, those who were not part of God's army, they all perished. There was none that was left except Rahab, and her family. If you don't belong to God, perishing is your destiny. And I want to invite you right now that you come right now as we remember God's body and the Lord's body and blood. It is God's body and blood. The church of God that he purchased with his blood. I want you to come and apply this by faith to you and say, I do believe, I will believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins i do believe i will believe that christ's blood was applied to my heart and by that you will be saved for the rest of us god is calling us to recommit to renew our commitment we have enlisted in god's army let us do our share in that army to work to wait and to win Let's bow our heads before the Lord. To the one who's still outside of this circle of those who want to do God's work, I say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And I pray that you will say it behind me right now. You say, I do believe, I will believe that Jesus died for me, that on the cross, he shed his blood for a sinner like me. That on the cross, he shed his blood for a sinner like me. Come to God's people. Come to God's army. Come and be part of the victory that will soon be given to God's people. With heads bowed and uh, eyes closed, I'd like to give a chance for people to express their recommitment and their entrance into God's
army. So for those who say, I would like to make sure I am part of God's army, of those who are saved, of the children of God, I'd like you to, to if you have repeated that prayer before behind me, I'd like you to just give an indication by raising your hand. Just raise your hand and say, I have done it. Amen, 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 amen. And for the rest of us, and I hope every one of us will just say, I want to be part, not only of this army to rest, but to work, to wait, and to win. And I pray that everybody who entered that army will today recommit and take that commitment. I want to work, I will wait, and I will win. To God be the glory, in Christ's name, amen. As brother